Hey, all right, let me ask you. I want to get your take on this border adjustment tax. Obviously, that's where the split has been. We were all expecting tax reform to happen within the first 200 days. Now we understand it's going to be pushed back later on in the year because of this border adjustment tax. What's your take on it? I think the border tax adjustment is a major mistake to put into legislation. It's a huge bureaucratic mess, to be honest with you. And if it's, if it's done ideally, Maria, which would be a tax on imports matched by a subsidy on exports of the equal size, it would have the same effect as devaluing the currency, which would lead to domestic inflation. Uh, but if you look at it, there will be all sorts of nuances, all sorts of political grab bags going in the process. And I just think they should just do tax rate reductions, get rid of this pay-for notion, and don't touch a border tax adjustment. It just makes no sense. Yeah, but you know what? We're talking about that. The Republicans want some revenue out of this new tax reform package, right? They're and they're talking yeah, they're about mistaken. the border adjustment tax raising a trillion dollars. All right, here's what Kevin Brady told me on Sunday, uh, chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, really one of the authors of the new tax reform package. Yep. Listen to this. We're going to have a tax code at the end of the day that no longer favors foreign um, products over American products. We're going to end the tax on made in America exports so we can compete and win anywhere in the world. And we're going to not just eliminate, we're going to obliterate any tax incentives to move American jobs overseas. So that's the point. That's their goal. Yeah, this is crazy. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I love Brady, and I think he's a wonderful, wonderful chairman. And, and I don't mean to say anything against it here, but that is a very bad idea. This pay-for notion. If we'd had a pay-for in 1981, we never would have had the Reagan tax cuts. If Kennedy had had a pay-for in 1961, never would have had the Kennedy tax cuts. If they'd had a pay-for in 1920s, there never would have been the boom of the Roaring Twenties and the Mellon Coolidge. Uh, prosperity. So this is a bad idea. It's a bad time to put it in. Just give us tax rate reductions. And if you want to get rid of loopholes and stuff like that, but don't raise taxes in this economy, it makes no sense. And especially not in areas where these people don't understand what they're doing. They have no clue what a border tax adjustment, the damage it can cause and the bureaucratic mess that will be there. All right, uh, Don Peebles. Uh, question. Hi, in. Don. Good morning. How, how do we um, uh, accomplish, you know, bringing more jobs back to America, more manufacturing jobs to America? Are they lost forever? Um, look, most no. Americans want to bring uh, our jobs back here and want our companies to compete on a level playing field. How do we accomplish that? Yeah, well, let me just say, Don, that we have the highest corporate tax in the world, in the OECD for sure, and our corporate tax is global, not territorial. So two differences from all the other countries. We have the fourth lowest tax revenues as a share of GDP out of the 34 OECD countries. If we cut that corporate tax from 35% to 15% as Trump has promised, that would not lose us any corporate tax revenues. It would give us huge growth in output, employment, and production. Jobs and businesses would move back to the U.S. And we'd get payroll taxes, we'd get income taxes, we'd get property taxes, sales taxes as secondary and tertiary taxes from all of the new activity. That's what we need to attract businesses back, not punish them punish them if they go. And that's the way to do it. And that can be done in 90 days. I don't know of a senator or a congressman who wouldn't love to just have the corporate tax rate reduced uh, and just get it over with. Art, you talk about uh, ignoring the pay for, but the nation's debt has doubled in, in the last, yeah, right. uh, at last eight years. So that is a concern for people who are fiscally conservative, number one, and without yeah, so broad-based broad tax reform where you at least in part broaden the base, you already have half of Americans pay no federal income tax. And how is that right yeah. and just? It's not right. It's not just. But, you know, we don't have a problem of people paying too little taxes, Dagan. We really don't. We have the worst performing economy in the last 70 years. It's the legacy that has been left to Donald Trump in this Congress. And I'm going to tell you, you cannot tax an economy into prosperity. What you should do is the tax rate reductions now, get the economic growth started, and then you cut entitlements, then you cut other programs once they're not needed. 
But you know, right now is not the time to worry whose tax you're going to raise, because frankly, if you do that, you're not going to get your prosperity and you're going to lose everything. I'm just trying to understand if it's actually even going to work, because in Dagan, I, I want to get your take on this too. I know you've studied this a lot, but Art, the argument for this border adjustment tax is that currencies will respond, right? That the dollar will <laughs> yes, go up. Yes, they will. Okay, so that's a lot of ifs, isn't it? Yeah, it, yes, they're, it they're is. betting the dollar goes up, then it's going to be okay for you know the the importers. They'll pay a higher tax, but at the same time, getting their products back in the U.S. is going to be okay because the dollar's higher, and then the exporters are going to face a higher dollar, but it's going to be okay because they're going to pay <laughs> lower corporate taxes. And then Art just touched on this that you create how much domestic inflation, right, Art? You yes, you sure know. do. You don't really. If you know. did it in an ideal world, if you did a border tax adjustment in an ideal world. Where you taxed imports and subsidized exports dollar for dollar. Now, the right. reason this raises money for Brady is that we have a trade deficit. So, this is just a huge tariff on imports net. All right, so but if it were balanced 10%, yep. 10%, all it would be is the equivalent to devaluing the dollar by 10%. You get internal inflation of 10%, and there would be no net effect except you would have created a huge bureaucracy to do all this collection, all the political lobbying, which would give you all the exceptions in there, and you'd have this thing. Double down doing the very problem that Washington yep. is classically known for bureaucracy. And the, and the other problem that I have with this is the fact that it's just delaying the whole thing, right? So we were of expecting tax is. reform right off the bat when, when the president took yeah. his term in office, and now we're looking yeah. at the rest of the, uh, the second half of the year. Having said that, yesterday <laughs> we had Kevin McCarthy on this show, and I just want to reiterate what he told us because. He basically pushed back on that and said, no, 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 no. We are still on our timeline, and that means tax reform in 17. Listen to this, Art. Okay. We have a 200-day plan here, and there's a structure and a method to this. We started with reg regulation reform, and you've watched that. That's been a two-part two plan, what? changing the structure of how you do regulations with the RAINS Act. Now you're watching uh, Congressional Review Act. Those are a number of bills that you could pass just with a simple majority in the House and the Senate. We did five of those last week, another three this week. And then we're moving on to repealing and replacing Obamacare. That's moving this month and next month. So he basically said the timeline is in place and tax reform, yeah, we'll, we'll have a plan in 200 days, but it will be executed end of year. Well, you know, I think what he said is just wonderful. I mean, they are doing a lot of wonderful stuff, and I have to laud this Congress enormously. There's just one idea that I don't think is good, Maria, but it's a great big bad idea, and that's that border tax adjustment. It just doesn't make sense. All right, we will be and watching if the they, development. Once they start, it's an important Once point. they start in this road, you can't get out. Believe me, I mean, I don't want to raise scare thoughts, but when you're playing around with tariffs and subsidies on exports and that type of stuff, you're going to create a real problem that you can't get out of. Yeah, which is why there's such a fiery debate, not only in Congress, but within corporate America, by the way. There's a whole coalition yeah, of companies we'll that support it, like the GEs of the world, and a whole coalition that don't support it. Uh, so we'll, yeah, well, we'll win we'll, ultimately we'll on that goes. one, Maria.